Hi guys, Eric from Legend Suspensions here. Uh, today I'm gonna go over the install of a set of Revo or Revo A shocks on one of the FL Touring models. Give you a few tips and tricks of the trade to hopefully make your installs go much easier. Yeah, baby! <laughs> yeah. Step one, we've already got our motorcycle on the lift, uh, secured and ready to uh, start removing the stock shocks. To, to remove the stock shocks on the back of the FL Touring models, you'll need a ratchet and a three quarter inch socket. So at this point, we've got the stock rear shocks removed from the motorcycle. Got our brand new set of Rebo A's uh, ready to mount up. One of the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the factory flat washers. State there to never reuse the large OEM flat washers. Take them off, set them with your stock shocks. If you ever were to need them in the future to reinstall your stock shocks as you trade the bike. First spacer that we're gonna use is the small stainless steel that goes up against the bolt head. And then we will actually go through the spherical bearing, the aluminum 3 8 washer or spacer on the back side, a little shot of blue Loctite. I want to uh, reiterate on this silver identification label will actually mount inboard or face th towards the inside of the motorcycle. This ensures that the shocks are oriented correctly and your rebound adjuster will face towards the rear on the Rebo A's. I always start with mounting the, top uh, mounting the top shock bolt first. This will allow the shock to, you can get it started and let it hang in place. That's what she said. <laughs> we'll go around to the right side. Slide to the right. Do the exact same process. The Street Glide does come stock with a 12 inch shock, but in this particular situation, we're actually going to mount a 13 inch shock on there. So now that I've got the shocks started and hung from the top bolts. I'll go around to the uh, jack and actually jack the bike up to lower the uh, rear wheel or the swing arm down to uh, match up the lower shock mounts and the bolts so we can finish the install there. One thing that I will also tell you is don't be surprised to see some inconsistencies in your lengths between your upper and lower mounting points. This is due to manufacturing intolerances between the swing arm and the subframe. And you may see anywhere from a 16th to an eighth of an inch difference from left to right. This is one of those spots where you can take and do the fast forward. I'm gonna do a final torque. At this point, uh, once you get the, the bolt snug down, take and refer to your factory uh, service manual or your local dealer for uh, factory torque settings. Once the shocks are permanently uh, mounted and torqued down, just a quick tech note, when they are properly installed without the large flat washers, you will have about a 10 degree rotation on the spherical bearings. This allows the shock and the rear suspension to basically move without any bind as the suspension travels through its range of motion. The number one important part of that install is ensuring that your spacer sequence is correct and no large flat washer against the upper and lower loops. So uh, proper spacer sequence, as you will see here, you got your factory bolt, the eighth inch stainless steel spacer that we supply from Legend in our mounting kit, as well as the al aluminum spacer on the backside. And that is the same top and bottom, left and right. So, and that covers the, uh, the install of a set of Rebo A's. From here, we'll move into the proper adjustment set and setup procedures for riders and, and 